Well, good morning. It's good to see all of you on here, at least for a few minutes. I get to see you as you hop on and just seeing your names, it just makes my heart feel so good. Uh, because I know, again, you know, I say it every week, but we really do miss each other. And I know this past week, I uh, we were out on the trail and we got to run into uh, Dwayne and Sharon, and it was just so nice to see their faces in person. And we all look forward to that time when we can come back together and and be with each other in person. But again, thank goodness for this technology. So thanks you guys for being here. We're we sorry for the how the the camera was positioned there. We were trying something different, but we're going back to this way. And um, also for those of you who maybe tried to get onto the class this morning but had a hard time, we tried something different, but we're gonna go back to our old way so you can easily get on the class at the 9.15. So again, welcome to everybody. Um, let's bring Mitch on to, uh, to start our morning off. Oh, in just a second. Oh, hold on. Here we go. Good morning to you all. It's lovely to be here with you. Once again, this is Mitch coming from uh, your screen, I guess, to say hello, good morning, and namaste to you. I hope you had a wonderful Easter. Uh, we still had ham and friends and family, uh, although we didn't get to spend time with my parents, which we normally do. We normally go over there, so that was sadness, but we're all together. We're all unity. There may have been some mention of a mohawk, you know, having to be done. I think I may have said something last week about that. Well, don't worry. I got one. Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo! Look at that right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You guys want a profile? Want a profile look? Excellent, right? No, wait, no, wait, no, wait, 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 wait. Here we go. Hello. Got that? All right, that's enough of that. I'm going to put that away to stop scaring people. It's, it's an ugly thing. It's an ugly thing. Today's my last day with the Mohawk. Carrie said, I thought it was going to be a one-day thing. Well, <laughs> she, was, she was wrong. It was a one-week thing. So, anyway, it's good to see you all, and good morning once again. So, <clears throat> now that we're through that ugliness, uh, please join me in our mission statement. Our mission is to encourage and inspire spiritual and personal growth by empowering each other to be authentically all that we came here to be. Even in this time of lockdown, there's, there are plenty of opportunities for us to encourage and inspire each other, whether it is on a one-on-one -on -one basis or just taking a few moments and letting that soul source breathe out there and encouraging and sending out the powerful energy as a human that you are to all the people around you and to those that you love. So, namaste to you on that. If you would now join me in Unity's Statement of Faith, there is only one presence and one power in the universe and in my life. God, the good, omnipotent. Once again, keep that in mind. In this whole universe, right now, there's only one presence and one power. And together, we're all one. And we'll roll through this time. So, let's go to the daily word. Um, our uh, uh, affirmation is, as I forgive, I feel the healing power of love. One more time. As I forgive, I feel the healing power of love. I may harbor resentment against someone who said or did something that hurt me, yet judgment and blame will not bring me peace or healing. In my heart, I know the truth. Only forgiveness will ease my suffering. A great weight is lifted from my shoulders when I forgive. I no longer blame another for my unhappiness or misfortune. I may acknowledge without condemnation that mistakes have been made, but I let go of resentment and allow my experience to be transformed by love and compassion. As I forgive, I release myself from negative energy. Within me, there is now a space for creativity, prosperity, and joy. As I forgive another and myself, I feel the healing power of love. Our scripture is Luke 6.37. It is, do not condemn and you will not be condemned. Forgive and you will be forgiven. Once again, our affirmation is, as I forgive, I feel the healing power of love. There's been so much in this time of uh, lockdown and quarantine, a awareness of getting out there and improving yourself and being better and doing that, and that's a great thing to do. But if you don't always get it done the way you think, oh, I had so much time today, but I didn't do what I wanted to do, or I did this or this, or I meant to do this and didn't do it, forgive yourself. Let it go. Today is a new day. Tomorrow is a new day. <sighs> You can forgive yourself and you can forgive others. 
I love you. Not a mistake to you. I'll see you sometime soon, I hope. Take care. And thank you, Mitch. I love, we can always count on Mitch to bring great levity to us. And you know what, Mitch? This is on video, so uh, we have we have that mohawk on video that we can bring up at any time. I just wanted to remind you of that. <laughs> so, so now is our time uh, to go into prayer. Prayer is one of our foundational uh, things that we do at Unity, and we always do affirmative prayer, knowing that as we are praying, that it is already being done in this invisible realm. So if you would like to add yourself or a loved one to our prayer list, you can call the church at 887-2214, that is 417 area code, or you can email the church at ccunity at sbcglobal.net. On our prayer list this morning, uh, the, for prayers that have been requested for this week, we have Joe, who is the brother of Judy, Karen, Teresa, her husband and baby girl, and Julie, and Sarah. So I'm gonna invite you, if you'd like to join me, to take a moment and close your eyes. Take in a nice deep breath. And focus on the truth that God, the good, is everywhere present. That God expresses in, as, and through us. We pray for Joe and Karen. We pray for all who have unexpectedly lost loved ones to this pandemic and to everyone who is presently fighting for a return to health. We pray for the medical professionals, the first responders, the scientists, the essential workers, and all their families, the people working to supply meals to those in need, and all who have been affected by this disease. May all their needs be met now and always. And may the kindness and service to one another that is being expressed continue and expand. We seek divine guidance, beloved, for the leaders of all countries to make right choices, right decisions, to be open to that divine guidance for the highest good of all. And coming from within, we share joy, happiness, and gratitude to raise the energy and uplift the consciousness of our one human family. God blesses us all, and we say thank you, thank you, thank you. And so it is, amen and amen. And now Paul is going to ring our prayer bowl as we move into a time of meditation. moments, I, I invite you to feel your heart space opening, remembering that there is only love, that love is the great healer, love is the great harmonizer, love is the one and only true presence and power. Ah, today, in this time of meditation, it's all about just filling ourselves with this beautiful, divine love. The love that is of God. The love that is without conditions. The love that loves for the sake of loving and is not concerned with who it loves or what it loves, nor is it concerned with the return of love. It's just the purity of of love that is willing to see beyond the facades, beyond the personalities, beyond the egos, beyond the hurts, beyond the, the pain, beyond suffering. A love that is willing to see in ourselves, first of all, 
our innate goodness, our innate wholeness, our innate beauty. And from that place, our ability to be able to see that innate goodness, that innate beauty in everyone around us. It is the highest calling that we have to truly love one another. The highest calling to be able to see someone in your mind's eye in front of you who has maybe done something hurtful to you or to someone that you love. The highest calling is to be able to look beyond that and to see that they too are a beloved child of God. To remember who they are so that they can then remember who they are. And to shine that light so brightly that it helps to illuminate it within their own being. God is love. I am love. I am in service to love. And today I choose to be loyal to love. So as we move into the silence, in order to just increase this love energy, this love vibration, I'm gonna invite you to bring someone or something into your mind that just immediately invokes this energy of love, someone that you love so much, or perhaps a child or a, a pet, just bring that image into your mind and let yourself feel that expansion of love in your beingness. And then as we move into the silence for just a short time, allow that energy of love to continue to expand and to emanate out into the world around you in the silence. And so it is, and so it shall be. And let's say together, amen and amen. And now John Russ, today we're talking about forgiving for good. And so John Russ is going to be sharing a song uh, by Janice Stanfield called Bitter or Better. And it's an incredibly beautiful song. So I give to you Mr. John Russ.
choice is up to you. The choice is up to you. Once a very wise man said these words to me. There's no greater teacher. Awesome job, John. Thank you so much. What a great song, too, for today. Before I get into my talk, I do want to acknowledge that this past weekend was supposed to be our Planet Unity Earth Day celebration event. Uh, we do have it rescheduled for um, June, and we're hoping that that's going to work. If not, we'll reschedule it again. Uh, I thought about doing an Earth Day talk today, but I really want to do that Earth Day talk around the time that uh, we do our Planet Unity. But I do want to acknowledge that it is the 50th <coughs> celebration of Earth Day. And for those of you who get the ARP magazine like we do, um, the, um, the guy who actually started it, organized the very first one, Dennis Hayes, is featured in the ARP magazine. And it's a great article uh, kind of sharing how he came about uh, to being part of that. Uh, and ultimately inspired 20 million Americans to take part in the f very first Earth Day. So just a reminder that it is an important thing and we will be definitely um, sharing that Planet Unity event. Okay, so today we are talking about forgiveness and this really does piggyback on the Easter story. Part of what I'm gonna be sharing with you today is from Reverend Howard Caesar, who was the senior minister um, at Unity of Houston in Texas and has uh, retired since then. Uh, Florence Scovel Shin uh, in the book The Game of Life is one of the very first books that I read that introduced me to new thought ideas um, and, and, and in a way that it was already something that was in my heart and in my soul and in my mind but I had never really read anything that really resonated <clears throat> and that really helped to put me on my spiritual path and in it she has a quote that says, man receives only that which he gives. The game of life is a game of boomerangs. Man's thoughts, deeds, and words return to him sooner or later with astounding accuracy. Now, I wanna say here, we know that grace is an important part of this as well. And in Unity, we see grace as um, we never reap the full harvest of our error thinking and we always reap more good than we sow. Thank God, literally, thank you, God. Um, but what she's talking about here is our third basic principle, the law of mind action, or what we call the law of attraction. Our great master teacher, Jesus, said it in these ways, what we sow is what we reap, as within, so without. Um, uh, the measure you give will be the measure that you receive. Also, there's a scripture that says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Uh, the Old Testament says, and this is an important one, your words do, no, do not go from you and come back to you void, but
but they go forth to fulfill the purpose for which they have been sent. So in other words, be aware of the words that you're sending out. The Buddha said that all that we are is a result of all that we have thought. So what, what, what we're saying here is that life isn't a matter of luck, that life is a matter of how we are using the laws of life. Um, and we do have the power. We are co-creators with the divine to call forth and to manifest the life that we truly desire. But we not only have the power to do that, my friends, we have a responsibility in that. And so the question that begs to be asked is, how responsible are we with the laws of life? So let me ask you this. How many of us have gossiped about somebody, uh, whether it's something that was true and we knew it to be true or something that we didn't even know was really true or not, but we shared that or maybe even that we've wished something awful on someone. Um, or and that we enjoyed it so much that we said it again and again to other people and maybe even years later and yet we sit back and we wonder why we're not living the life that we truly desire to live well here's the thing we're all on a spiritual quest you know we wouldn't be listening to a program like this attending a church like this if we weren't on a spiritual quest our our desire is to go deeper our desire is to understand what is standing in the way of the brilliance of the light that we are? What is standing in the way of that really shining and emanating in our life? Um, what is it that perhaps we could let go of, things that we could release? Um, and what are some things that we could embrace? Um, so one must question, we must question our thoughts, we must question our opinions, we must question the programming that we've had um, and the energy that moves through us. And we, we have to get really honest with ourselves. And that's not always an easy journey to get really honest with ourselves, but it's important in this journey, our, this human spiritual journey to get honest with ourselves. So Reverend Howard Caesar poses some questions for us and he says, hopefully the answer to these questions is gonna be a yes. So I'm going to encourage you after I ask each question to say yes to the question because I promise you there are going to be questions you want to say yes to. Do you want to be free of inner conflict? Yes. Do you want to have peace of mind? Yes. Do you want to be free of the past? Yes. Do you want to be a consistently loving person? Yes. Do you want to have a healthy body? Yes. <laughs> Do you want to have an ongoing, do you want to have ongoing consistent harmony? Yes. Do you want to have relationships that work? Yes. Do you want to evolve spiritually? Yes. Do you want to be happy? Yes. Do you want to be prosperous? Yes. I'm going to assume all of us answered yes to all of those questions. So what could offer us all of those things? Well, there's one thing, and I'm going to tell you right now that it is not easy. Um, but it is one of the most very powerful and potent teachings that exists um, that requires an ongoing regular regimen of being awake and aware of it and that is the teaching of forgiveness. Forgiveness offers us the yes to all of those questions that were asked of us. Now, I want to talk about for a second uh, the, it not being so easy because I, I was listening to a minister and he compared forgiveness to like going to the dentist. And he said it's that hard for us that most of us don't really look forward to going to the dentist. You, know, you go to the dentist and you're, you know, if you're getting your mouth clean, you're sitting there for an hour with your mouth wide open or you're having cavities filled and you got somebody in your mouth and you know, they're, they're scraping and they're, and they're drilling and he says they're drilling, they're filling and they're billing. <laughs> and, and he said, but why do we do it? We do it because we know that that's what's best for us that going to the dentist on a regular basis, getting our teeth clean, taking care of our teeth and our gums is best for us. And it's the same with forgiveness, that it's, it's something that is a hard thing to go through, but it is vitally important to a quality of life, uh, to a life that, like I said, is the yes to all of those questions that he asked us. We're all, learning and we're all growing in this forgiveness process. It's not a one day thing. 
it is an ongoing thing for us. I, I, I'm going to assume it's the same for you that I will think that I have mastered forgiveness in something and years later something will trigger it and I'm shocked at how that energy comes back up. So it's an ongoing thing for us. It's not only ongoing that way, but we're given daily opportunities to practice forgiveness. And I'm gonna talk more about that um, next week. So Jesus taught us that the most powerful force in the universe is love. And he said, the greatest commandment is what? Is love. So, and what Howard says, and I love this line, he says, forgiveness essentially means that I am going to be loyal to love. I just love that, that I'm gonna be loyal to love. And that to be unforgiving is actually to be unloving. And if we really want to be seeking spiritually, we must become conscious of all of the opportunities that life gives us to be loyal to love. And I'm gonna say life gives us a lot of opportunities um, to make that choice, to be loyal to love, um, or not and and I do want to say here that that doesn't mean that we're always gonna we're always gonna you know hit the bullseye every time but it does mean that we have the opportunity to come back and 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 to hit that bullseye ultimately now again our great master teacher Jesus said things like whoever smiteth thee on the right cheek turn to him the other cheek also and one of the ways in which he meant this was that we are not to react in kind, to retaliate in the same energy in which somebody maybe did something or said something to us. In word, in deed, um, whatever, it's not about getting revenge, but the ego mind is going to want to take us there. And I love this. He said, the golden rule is do unto others as you would have them do unto you, not do unto others as they just did unto you. <laughs> and, and I love that, because that's a, that's a great reminder, isn't it? Jesus also said, let the dead bury the dead. And essentially he was saying, it's so important that we don't live in the past. What is done is done, what is over is over. And what happens when we keep replaying it, when, when we keep that as the, as the focus in our, in our mind as to why our lives are the way they are because of this person did this to me, you know, and I, I've not been able to do this in my life because this person did this to me, that we're actually experiencing a dying to our present life that is to be lived when we're clinging on to the past. And I understand that that's not easy, and especially if we've had some really traumatic experiences and we have PTSD, but the healing work is important to do. Um, and I do believe that ultimately we can really decrease that level of, you know, when we're, when we're triggered, when we do that healing work. And then coming to uh, how it's a continuation of the Easter story when Jesus is on the cross and he says, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Now, this is a hard one for us. So I want to start by having us look at ourselves for a moment. We are still learning and we are still growing and we are not always living our highest. And probably all of us can raise our hands and say, that's true. So Father, forgive them for they know not what they do is that we are recognizing that they are still living and they are learning, I'm sorry, they're still learning and they are still growing just as I am. It's the recognition that in our own spiritual growth, we are not there yet. And so in that, we can hopefully cut the other person a little bit of slack. It never means that we stay engaged in an unhealthy or an abusive relationship. We do not stay engaged in that. But I do believe that when we recognize that when someone has or is showing up in such hurtful and negative ways, they aren't remembering who they are. They are acting from their own woundedness, from their ego, from their guilt, from their shame, from their pain. And sometimes people are acting from a mental illness, um, from being a narcissist or maybe being a sociopath or something like that. So to say, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do is a true statement because from that consciousness, they really don't. And for me, when I, when I say, Father, forgive them, it's really that I'm, I'm calling on that highest aspect of myself to help me in seeing it differently. You know, help me, this highest aspect of my God self, to be able to see them differently and 
to move out of this resentment and this anger. Now, I know that sometimes in our lives, people do specifically do things to hurt us. We've probably had experiences like that, but I'm gonna tell you, even in that, they truly don't know what they're doing from that higher perspective. They do not know what they're inflicting upon their own life experiences by the actions that they're taking. So let's bring it back to us again, because what we do know is that when we recognize the pain that we purposely inflict upon another person will create incredible conflict in our own lives, will keep us from expressing greater good in our lives, we are much more aware and willing to choose higher. And you know, we've talked about this before, you know, God help me to choose higher because I know better. And the thing is, is that I believe we all truly do know better. It's a call for us to do better and a call for us to be better and a call for us to be loyal to love. There's a beautiful quote from Course in Miracles and this is what it is. It says, the grace of God gently rests gently on forgiving eyes and everything they look on speaks of him to the beholder. He can see no evil, nothing in the world of fear and no one who is different from himself. And as he loves them, so he looks upon himself with love and gentleness. He would no more condemn himself for his mistakes than damn another. He is not an arbiter of vengeance nor a punisher of sin. The kindness of his sight rests on himself with all the tenderness it offers for others, for he would only heal and only bless. And being in accord with God's will, he has the power to heal and to bless all those he looks on with the grace of God upon his sight. That is such a beautiful quote because it, it calls us to what we can be. That, and, and I believe what we are here to be, that we are here to be healers, that we are here to really be the love of God in action. And when we are willing to look with that gentleness, um, if we can look with gentleness upon ourselves, then we can more easily look upon um, others with that gentleness too. Now Howard tells a story, a couple of stories about forgiveness. One is a, a man whose name is Asim, and his son, who was, uh, you know, like a, probably a 17 year old or something like that, but he was a pizza delivery boy. And he was delivering pizza to an apartment and there were other young, teenagers in this apartment and when the door opened the young teenager had a gun and wanted him to leave the pizza there for free and instead of doing that it seemed turned around and went to leave with the pizza and this other young man shot and killed him now it took time but eventually through his spiritual path a seemed developed a forgiving heart and he eventually developed a relationship with the grandfather of this son and of, of this young man. And he also eventually developed a relationship with the young man himself. And he shared that by developing these relationships, he was able to better understand the childhood that this young boy was brought up in. And it gave him a, a greater understanding of why he was the way that he was. It did not excuse what he did, but the thing that it did for Asim was it brought him to a place of compassion. And eventually Asim actually created a foundation for young boys to teach them all about the power of forgiveness. Now another story that he shares is the shootings in uh, Charlton, South Carolina a number of years ago where nine people were brutally shot while they were uh, doing their Bible study. But this is it was a heartbreaking story, but at the same time, it was an incredibly profound thing that happened in this. And it was something that all of us got to experience on a national, but also on a global level. Um, family members, community leaders, you know, while heartbroken, they expressed their forgiveness for this young man who committed this crime. Uh, love and healing were demonstrated. When the judge was doing the bond hearing, he allowed the family members to come in and to speak about their loved ones, which they did. But as after each family member spoke about their, their loved one, they expressed forgiveness to this young man. Now here's the thing, this 
was only days after they lost their loved ones. And here's something that's even harder for us. This young man wasn't asking for forgiveness. That's one that really trips us up, is when somebody's not even maybe realizing or accepting that they've done anything, that makes it a lot harder for us to, to forgive. But this is an amazing testimony to forgiveness that even in the worst possible conditions, that it is possible. And ultimately, what it becomes is it becomes a choice and we just don't really believe that we have that choice, but I wanna tell you today that you do have that choice. And the question is, would I be willing to do the same thing if I was in their shoes? Because this is no small thing. Forgiveness ends the corrosion of the soul on an individual basis. I love that. Forgiveness ends the corrosion of the soul on an individual basis. The key is to not become attached to our anger and to our hatred. Forgiveness is about releasing ourselves from toxic emotions. So the title for today came from a book by Dr. John Luskin called Forgive for Good. So here is something that he shares. Uh, he says, picture the crowded scene in front of a harried air traffic controller. Picture the chaos in the room and the jumble of the planes on the screen. Now imagine that your unresolved grievances are the planes on the screen that have been circling for days and weeks, maybe years on end. Most of the other planes have landed, but your unresolved grievances continue to take up precious airspace, draining resources that may be needed in an emergency. Having them on the screen forces you to work harder and increases the chance for accidents. The grievances, the grievance planes become a source of stress and burnout is often the result. So he said, how did the planes get up there in the first place? Well, there's three things that he says how those planes got up there. The first one is we took something too personally. And when we take something too personally, we internalize it and it ingrains the pain inside of us. And when it ingrains the pain inside of us, it weakens us. The second thing he said, that how there, our grievance planes get up there is we continue to blame the other person for how bad we felt. We blame our parents, we blame our ex-spouse, we blame our boss, we blame our siblings, our teachers, our churches. They are the cause of our unhappiness. But here's the thing, when we do this, we literally give our power away. And the third thing is he said that we've created a grievance story. So it's one thing to tell our story once or twice, um, but we have a tendency to keep telling it over and over, year after year. And if we do that, we have an issue. And especially if we are still having the same emotions about it when we're telling the story. Um, what it does is it keeps that energy alive. But it not only does that, it builds a narrative that we are victims. And when, when we think of ourselves as victims, that is our most unempowered place uh, because we place all of our power outside of us. So the question is that he poses is who are you renting space to in your mind? Who are you renting space to in your life? And the question then is, well, why do we keep renting that space? And he says it's because we don't know how to deal with the hurts in life. We don't know how to deal with things when somebody abandons us, somebody betrays us, um, somebody rejects us when somebody emotionally or physically abuses us, um, whatever it is. So by default, we choose resentment or revenge, or we choose to shut down or run away, or we choose to blame um, and become a victim. And I think probably all of us can relate to that as in various experiences throughout our lives. So he, he says, okay, so what is forgiveness? Forgiveness is the peace you learn when you, I'm sorry, forgiveness is the peace you learn to feel when you allow these circling planes to land. Forgiveness is for you and not the offender. Now I'm gonna say here, I don't totally agree with that because I believe that in our highest state of forgiveness, forgiveness is for all of us. And that to me, when I feel when I have truly forgiven, is when I am at that place that Jesus called us to be where we, you know, we love those that we would call our enemies, bless them, do good for them, and pray for them. We want for them what we want for our most beloved person. Forgiveness is taking back your power 
Forgiveness is taking responsibility for how you feel. Forgiveness is a trainable skill, just like learning how to throw a baseball. Forgiveness helps you get control of your feelings. Forgiveness absolutely can improve your mental and physical health. Forgiveness is becoming a hero instead of a victim. Forgiveness is a choice and everyone can learn to forgive. Now, he says, this is what forgiveness is not. Forgiveness is not condoning unkindness. Forgiveness is not forgetting that something painful has happened. In fact, um, what we wanna do is take that opportunity to learn from it. Forgiveness is not excusing poor behavior. Forgiveness does not have to be an otherworldly or religious experience. Forgiveness does not mean reconciling with the offender. We do not ever have to have a relationship with them. We can still love and bless them from afar, and that's probably a really good thing to do in, in many cases. And forgiveness does not mean you give up having feelings. So Peter asked Jesus, how often should we forgive? And, you know, seven times. And our great master teacher said, no, seven times 70. Now seven is also a number of completion. So here's the thing. Forgive only when you want to feel whole and complete. When you want to feel peace. When you want to experience love. When you want to let go of pain. When you want to live the life that you desire to live. So in other words, do it every time. You know, cultivate that consciousness of what love truly is and develop a consciousness of forgiveness. How do we do that? He says you have to choose to forgive. You have to decide to forgive. Dr. Luskin tells a story of a young man whose boss had done something to him and this young man was so angry and he said, I will never, ever be able to forgive this man for what he did. And so, you know, Dr. Luskin is talking through just, he was adamant. There's nothing, nothing will ever make me forgive what this, what the, my boss did. And so finally, Dr. Luskin said, so let me ask you this. If I would offer you $20 million in return for you forgiving your boss, what would you do? And the young man looked at him and he said, my mama didn't raise a fool, I would take the money. <laughs> so his point obviously being, that forgiveness is a choice. It really is a choice and it really is a decision. And what we are missing out on in our lives when we are holding this resentment and this anger and this blame is far exceeds the value of money. We are missing out on wholeness, on peace of mind, on loving relationships, on health. We, we know we've talked about forgiveness for years, and the, the incredible um, things that it does to our body when we're in that place of, of resentment and anger and blame, um, you know, moving into a conscious and choosing forgiveness really uh, makes everything that matters so much better. Um, the whole idea of forgive for good is that when we don't forgive, we miss out on all the good that is waiting for us. So I'm gonna invite us to share in some affirmations today. So I'm gonna invite us to say them together. I choose to forgive. I choose to be free. I choose to reclaim my power. I choose to let go of the past. I choose to move on to greater things. I choose to live a better life. I choose to forgive. And here's the thing I want to tell you, that for this week, just work on those. Just work on these things. I choose these things. And just making the choice will open out the way. I want to close with a poem by Morgan Harper Nichols. And it's when you start to feel the pull of the past and you are helpless trying to calm unyielding storms on your own. Remember to do the best that you can do while knowing and trusting it's not all up to you. For it is okay 
more than okay to cast down your burdens and choose to believe in healing. And so it is, and so it shall be. And I say to you, namaste. Now next week we're gonna be continuing on with this and uh, we're gonna be talking about self-forgiveness and we're gonna be talking about daily forgiveness, daily reconciliation. So now we're gonna be blessed again by Mr. John Russ sharing his wonderful music with us. service um, to talk about uh, our donations. We want to say thank you to everybody who is continuing to support the ministry throughout this time. Uh, if you would like to make a donation towards our ministry, there are many ways you can do that. You can go to our website at unityofspringfield.org and you can make a donation there. You can give through our Tithely app, um, which you can download, or you can text uh, your donation uh, to this number into the general fund. Also, also, if you want to give on PayPal, you can give on PayPal to our email, ccunity at sbcglobal.net, or you can mail a check 
2214 East Seminole, Springfield, Missouri, 65804. We again thank you for your continued support of what we are here to do and to be together to get this message out in a bigger way because we do know that this message is a healing message. So thank you everyone for your continued support. Um, some announcements, uh, and it's the things that are ongoing. Next Sunday, uh, Dan DiCarlo will do part two of uh, Alan Watts on the Way of Zen at 9.15 right here on Facebook. Obviously, our Sunday celebration is always at 11 a.m. on Facebook. On Wednesday evening, we have a, a renewal at 7 p.m. where I am literally reading out of the book, God Will See You Through by Mary Cupferly, followed by... A Zoom connection and I do hope that you will consider downloading Zoom there are instructions on our website and also right here on our Facebook page and joining us it was just so nice to just get to be with everybody last week and just see each other and connect and just talk about what's going on our daily word uplift is done by Dee Richardson and myself Monday through Saturday at 1230 right here on Facebook our Unitine and Teens um, are on Zoom on Sundays at 10.45 a.m. and on Wednesdays at 5.45 p.m. Our Junior Sunday School, uh, Rachel Willis, is doing that right here on, I'm uh, not on this Facebook page, I'm sorry, on our Unity of Springfield Youth and Family page. And she's also reading a book to the kids, and that's just really a wonderful thing to go check out again, the Unity of Springfield Youth and Family page. And then um, come back and check out this Facebook page for other announcements uh, throughout the week. So let's um, close our service with our prayer for protection together. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. And the presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is and all is well. I want to say a huge thank you to John Russ, to Mitch Brashears, to Dee Richardson, to Paul Day for being my cameraman. And I want to say a huge thank you to you for being here. Um, again, I miss you guys so much. I can't wait until we can all come back together and be with each other. Um, but in the meantime, know that both Paul and I just surround you with our love and um, with our prayers for continued health and wholeness uh, throughout this time. So we're gonna close with, you know what we're closing with, with I am alive with the Spirit of God. It's time to get up, get off of your seats, and move your bodies as John blesses us with this song. All right. Hey everybody, here's a song called I am alive with the Spirit of God.
live with the Spirit of God, and I look forward to seeing you um, at 1230 uh, during the week and on Wednesday night. God bless each and every one of you. Again, namaste.